what is up guys this is rise and welcome to another video you never know what's going to happen in the go battle league and that's exactly what transpired yesterday when i went onto my stream home slice henry was nice enough to join me for a guest the elo segment which we will feature later on the channel and inspired by the legend himself home slice henry we decided to run close combat annihilate what transpired was perhaps the greatest day of my go battle league career where we were able to uh go on a crazy run um winning 23 out of 25 games we went 18 and 2 on stream including a 15 and 0 winning streak and then we went from 2700 on the leaderboard that day where we started with a 200 and 76 elo climb on the day to bump ourselves up to number six on the global leaderboard today you're gonna see my lock screen uh oh nothing exposed hopefully and uh yeah look at this so this is where we were 387 on the leaderboard which is very good yesterday and the day after number six on the leaderboard i don't know if anyone's ever had a jump quite like that and you see at one point we were 15 and 0 on stream and chat was going kind of crazy and i will say there's the saying right Pre uh, luck is when preparation meets opportunity and what you're gonna see in a lot of these battles is favorable leads and i anticipate some comments trying to discredit the run that we go on because we won the majority of our leads that's for sure but you also have to make sure that you play well enough to maintain those positive leads and come out with the wins in a lot of these games. So I will forewarn you, Clarence, we're going to win a lot of these leads, but we try to make some nice plays as well to maintain the advantages that we get in this day of the go battle league. And am I saying that it was completely skill to go 23 and 2? Absolutely, positively not. There was a lot of luck involved in a lot of favorable team comps anytime you're going to go majorly positive in the Go Battle League. But we did play well enough, as we mentioned, to maintain our advantages and win some of these games. So you notice me take extra damage from that Victory Bell to give a little bit less farm to this Bastidon. We're not sure what's going to be in the back exactly. In comes a Tropius. Bit of a misplay here because I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I'm going to bait the Ice Punch to get a shield off of him. Kind of unnecessary. I think would have been better off just going immediately into the Dugong. And we are, either way, in a pretty good spot here. Razor Leaf is four energy, so it's going to take eight Razor Leafs to get to Leaf Blade. And um, I just decided to play it safe, go for the Icy Wind here. I might have been able to farm down there. I think it would have come down to DRE. And then I'm just going to let him smack down a couple times. Go for the Icy Wind because at this point I still have a shield for my Annihilate to hide behind. And I'm thinking fast move damage is all I'm going to need. So I go for the Icy Wind um, since he still had two shields to hide behind. And we should be chilling here as we counter down the Bastidon. And he is out of there. He's out of there. Reminds me of Chris Smooth in there like swimwear. Um, so win number one. And we go on to game number two, another positive lead. The good thing about Guzzlord, if you use this team, is the entire team has play against Guzzlord. He does swap in, though, a Jellicent. And you may notice we don't really have an obvious answer to the Jellicent. So we're going to stay in, at least for now, with our Annihilate. And our opponent decides to throw on alignment. Maybe they're thinking we're more um, at, this, at a higher elo range. We're less likely to like, catch on alignment. So that kind of makes sense. I go for the Night Slash here. Debating whether I want to instant swap or do one and then swap. I do one and I throw. And now do I do one and swap or do I just swap? Looks like I do one and swap and I'm able to catch the surf here. This is going to be nice. Well, we're assuming it's the surf. Let's see. Yep, it is the surf and we lure out the lantern. And that's one thing you'll notice with this team is we're very weak to lantern in the back. It's really important to lure out the lantern with the dugong drill run connects onto lantern and at this point um i'm like you know i might as well just get rid of this thing while i'm here he's out of shield i can shield this thunderbolt and i probably could have over farmed there but i just really wanted to get rid of this lantern because i'm thinking the guzzlord doesn't really have much place to go in the back so as long as i can get rid of this lantern 
and get rid of the jelly hopefully we should be chilling a shadow ball should knock us out from this range so we are going to have to go down to the shadow ball come in with skarm since we can at least it's not going to be an easy farm down but can at least steel wing it down as opposed to we're not really going to be able to counter it down with annihilate shadow ball connects we take the move or come into the full farm down and we've got all this energy for the guzzlord brave bird incoming and after this brave bird connects we're going to be able to swap out clear our debuff and inflict some big counter damage to this guzzlord throw the night slash why not you better not give me the unnecessary boost don't give me the unnecessary boost okay thank you niantic you don't want those boosts when they don't matter you got to save them for when they do matter. And we pick up the win there. Going to skip ahead a little bit. Got a little bit ahead of myself there. But you see that ELO, right? 2,700. And I forgot to mention the catchphrase. This is a long video. So sit back, pause the video, grab a snack, and enjoy. We we face a lantern. I just stumbled on my words. We face a lantern. I got stuck between like face and play, I think. You ever do that? You get stuck between two words and you like combine the words. That happens to me quite frequently as Annihilate faces off against the Lantern. This is where we want to see Lantern with this team, right? We want to see it in the lead. We want our two back Pokemon to avoid this Lantern. And this is where close combat really showed itself to be useful is in these neutral leads where they understand that we're not quite at a, uh, a Shadow Ball. So they're willing to let it go. And then we knock it out and take Switch Advantage. We, we pivoted immediately into Dugong because we felt it might be, use, be useful to save that health we had remaining on our Annihilate. We lure out the Lickitung, and this is looking like perfect at the moment because Dugong is going to be able to soft lose this matchup while debuffing this Lickitung. And then Skarmory is just a really dominant matchup against Wigglytuff in the back, especially with Steel Wing now, where we should be smooth sailing here. Just going to let this go. I probably come in with Annihilate right away, I would think. Oh, he goes Body Slam. So I get off this Parting Icy Wind, which is pretty nice. And now I might just go straight into Skarm. Yeah. Since we knock at the Lickitung, I just go straight into Skarm. My opponent recognizes it's over. And we get the win. Let's keep things moving. Let's keep things in motion. I know there's a little bit of times of uh, gaps in this video. Azu, so it looks like maybe... Oh, okay. Never mind. I was going to say, maybe our first bad lead. No, it was a Vigoroth lead that we're going to see. <laughs> we do overcome some bad leads in this video. But like I said, we got we had a very opportunistic day. You could say a lucky day, very opportunistic day where we were faced with lots of positive lead matchups and were able to capitalize with a lot of wins. Annihilate into Vigoroth, very dominant matchup. He swaps Azumarill. I don't have an obvious Azumarill answer. So I'm forced to stay in, at least for now. And I go for the close combat because if he calls it, um, at least I'll be doing a decent chunk of damage. We swap into Dugong. And here I'm thinking, okay, I don't necessarily need to preserve switch advantage because both my Annihilate and my Skarmory have decent matchups against the Vigoroth. Of course, Annihilate has a great matchup against Vigoroth. So if I can maintain alignment, that'd be great. But Skarm can also hold its own. And one thing that Home Slice Henry made a good point about as he was running close combat Annihilate is in the meta, that close combat makes it dangerous and a little safer even in its bad matchups. So if it's something like a Wigglytuff, worst case scenario, um, close combat still really does a lot to Wiggly. To Wiggly. Should have probably overfarmed one more against the Azu because then I would have got to that move. But now he's locked in Vig against our Annihilate. Rock Slide chips away at our health. I decide to throw the Night Slash here on Charge Attack Priority because I don't want to take another Rock Slide. Night Slash coming through, going to knock out the Vigoroth. And it's Altaria in the back. And, you know, in the two-shield scenario, Altaria can uh, potentially flip this matchup. However, we are looking good here because we are um, up a shield. They go straight for the Moonblast. I think that's a really smart play because now fast moves you're going to see are going to become a little bit scary in this game. And, you know, I may be, I may be um, incorrect. I think the OG, like, Air Slash Skarm could, would, would lose to Altaria in the two shield. But now with the Steel Wing buff, I bet Skarmory would win the twos. Just um, straight Sky Attack, probably. So we're going for another move here. 
They're going to put it all in the back of Azu, but with still two shields to hide behind, we're chilling. We're going to go for the close combat here. It does much more damage than a Night Slash would do, and it's going to be enough to knock out the Azumarill for a G to the G. Annihilate, not as cute as Azumarill, but perhaps just as strong and just as powerful. Two very different Pokemon, right? One is uh, a fighter and a ghost. One is a fairy and a water type. Next opponent here, Annihilate into Bastion. So another positive lead for us. And we um, see an awkward swap, right? So we don't really have an obvious answer to this Shadow Sableye, but I'm thinking Dugong should be able to hold its own here. I can debuff this thing. And if I can just maintain alignment, we should be okay. So Shadow Sableye here. We don't have an obvious answer. We go in with our bulky Dugong. We're going to land the Icy Wind here. And now I'm just using my judgment. I'm like, okay, he definitely is going to go for a power gem here. Can I live a power gem? He's debuff. I think I can live a power gem in Ice Shard down. We're correct. Because of the debuff, we're able to live the power gem. In comes Bastidon. Just going to throw this parting drill run to do more damage. Especially since we know he'll probably swap out immediately. Knowing that he's aligned with the Annihilate. We got to be quick to react here. If there's something in the back, like a Trevenant up a shield, this is not looking great. But we got to think, okay, what's our win con? These Bastiodon lead teams are very good at drawing out the counter for the back Pokemon and then sweeping with uh, that back Pokemon. So I'm thinking, okay, he's probably not going to bait in this scenario since he's already up a shield. We shield the Shadow Ball correctly. I'm thinking I need to get to a Sky Attack here. I just need to hope I live this Shadow Ball. We've got a pretty good IV Skarmory. Can we hang on to the Shadow Ball? Yes, we can. We got the Sky Attack, and now I just need to get rid of this Trevenant um, and we should be smooth sailing. So nothing too complicated here, right? Just throw the Night Slash right away. Wait, Rise, wait. Why are you over farming? Rise, are you trying to throw the game? I think we're trying to throw the game. We over farm unnecessarily because we miscounted. And Night Slash is going to knock out the Trevenant. But hopefully this doesn't cost us the game. Can we still get to this close combat? We can. It's a charge attack priority and a little bit of a misplay there. Um, and you know what's crazy? Like if we uh, had lost that, this uh, this whole thing might not be happening. This whole win streak going. So um, we escaped there with a win after making a bit of a a scary misplay and a 5-0 set to start things off, getting us from 2700 to 2771. And we will continue on as we've got the Annihilate Dugong Skarmory Core going strong. Annihilate into Lantern. Once again, this is like a neutral lead. However, it's almost a favorable lead in the sense that our back line is avoiding it. I did see some crazy teams, though. I saw I saw some teams that were uh, Whiskash lead with Lantern in the back. Like, that is just wild to me. We get the Night Slash bait. Very good. Um, debating whether I want to invest a shield of my own. I decide not to. I eat the Surf. And we are going to throw the Close Combat on the Charge Attack priority with his next Surf. This way, I am willing to let it go because I got a shield advantage, and now I can just let an eye go. I'm hoping that there's no hard, harder punish to our back Pokemon than the Lantern, and I think we're correct in our guesstimation as he's super weak to Scar in the back, so he was forced to stay in the lead. Um, honestly, our opponent probably should have swapped Gligar, right? If he had swapped Gligar, I think he's still in a rough spot because we can punish with either one of our back Pokemon. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe he knew our team. But, yeah, by staying in, he no longer had an answer to that Skarm that we had lurking in the back. As we search for another opponent here. Hmm. Do I skip ahead or is that getting overzealous? I feel like we're about to find a battle. I feel like it's about to happen. Right now, <laughs> you did. Let's see. Okay, man, went a little bit too far. Technical difficulties. Oh man. Okay. Um, basically, all that's happened so far is the lead matchup with Cash going to debuff us with a Scald. I throw the close combat here on charge attack priority. With the Mud Bomb, close combat coming through, does big damage. And at this point, I'm like, hmm, I think I'm willing to just, no, 
I take it back. <laughs> I'm going to shield because I feel like switch advantage could matter here, which makes sense. We get off a of close combat. This might be a bit of a mistake because I'm probably better off saving the close combat, but we get a shield, which is nice too. And now I'm thinking, hmm, okay. No reason for him not to go for the power whip here, really. So I'm going to respect it. And because that whisk cache is so low, I could potentially put myself in a situation where we can debuff the last Pokemon. He shields the Icy, which surprises me because I'm going to outpace here. The most he can get to is an Aqua Tail, which he could charge attack priority. He elects not to do that. So I'm just going to throw this right away, get rid of this Gudra. And now we got like a Pokemon and a half against one Pokemon in the back. And this is just going to be smooth sailing. So uh, yeah, Gudra had nowhere to go. Another favorable team comp for us. And once they see the Skarmory in the back, they may top left. Maybe they're already out of here. Maybe they are already out of here. Lots of Wigglytuffs that we saw on this day. On this day of high elo gain. And we're just going to skip ahead. As that one was clearly over. Unless someone in the comments says, Rise, that wasn't over. They still had play. I, don't, I disagree. I mean, it's not over till it's over. But... We played the legendary Tho Technical. Tho is such an amazing player. Always a pleasure to play him. Terrific content creator as well. Go check out his channel. And we are going to throw the Night Slash here against his spicy Shadow Gyarados. I feel like I don't want to stay in to let him Aqua Tail me. So I'm going to swap. And luckily for us, doesn't have a hard punish to Dugon. Which tells me there's probably no like Lantern in the back. Which makes sense, right? If you're running a Gyarados lead, probably not going to have a Lantern. It'd be a little weird. Um, not that they're like... I guess they kind of cover each other in some ways, but not in others. Um, Power Whip, we shield. Because I'm ahead, I'm like, you know, I could get off two debuffs before he could land a Power Whip, and maybe I can dance around a little. Who knows? Um, we're going to eat this one, and I think I might aggressively swap. I think I might aggressively swap into Annihilate, and yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to aggressively swap into Annihilate. And I'm hoping I can live this Aqua Tail and still get off my Night Slash. That's what I'm hoping for here. Aqua Tail comes through, and we do hang on to get off our parting Night Slash. This is going to knock out. Oh, no, it's not. He's going to invest the shield in Gyarados. I'm thinking, hmm, I don't want to use my Icy Wind here. And he probably gets to a move against Dugong. So I'm just going to come in, absorb the energy with my Skarmory. And this way I can keep that Icy Wind for later. I'm wondering what is going to be in the back. And he's waiting out his switch timer. It is a Gligar. So I combo play with that Icy Wind I have loaded. Figure this would draw his final Protect Shield. And then we could Brave Bird later. But he, I think, kind of concedes knowing that Gligar had no, no real play there against our back line. So tough team comp for Tho. I don't think there's a whole lot he could have done to uh, flip that, that team composition advantage that we had. As we search for the next opponent. Here we go. <laughs> Another positive lead. <laughs> oh, man. I can just see the comments. So, very favorable alignment here. Um, I'm thinking like, hmm, okay, how could this go wrong? One way it could go wrong is if he flips switch advantage. But I'm confident that even if he connects on the Shadow Ball, which he does, I should still be able to withstand that damage and get to another Icy Wind. Um going to go for another Icy here. He throws at six, so I know this is not enough for Shadow Ball. He was one shy, so I can take an Ominous Wind, and I decide, okay, if you want to flip switch, you're going to have to go down two shields to do so. So that's what we opt for here. We get off another Icy Wind. Double debuffed is the Giratina. I'm going to go for a big Steel Wing down here. And what you're going to see in this game, I'm thinking, okay, like worst case scenario, it's a Wigglytuff probably in the back, which hard punishes our Annihilate. But I'm thinking, hmm, even if it is Wigglytuff, at least we have close combat, and it is a Wigglytuff. But check this out. Normally, we'd be completely walled. Now, we are not. Close combat, heavy, neutral damage incoming onto the Wigglytuff. Puts it very low. One Steel Wing knocks out, and we are up two shields against the Sand Slash. He gets denied, which is unlucky. Would have, should have, He should have got an extra fast move there, but I don't think it would have changed the outcome as we are up two shields. And you see those uh, Steel Wings chunking as we approached the game-winning Sky Attack. Next game here, we're approaching like the halfway point of this video. And it's like seven wins in a row or so. 
This team going absolutely bananas. <laughs> Funny name from the opponent and another positive lead. Another positive lead. I'm feeling guilty. I'm feeling guilty. But again, we don't have an obvious counter swap. So we're going to come in Dugong here as our anti Sableye swap. And we want to make sure that we retain switch advantage if possible. Going for the icy wind here. I probably should have shielded the first, to be honest. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's merit to like letting that go versus shielding it. Because I end up shielding the second one, if I remember correctly. So I might as well have shielded the first, since the second would do more damage. I guess the other way of looking at it is if I shield the first, maybe they go for the return on the second. No, I'm, I'm not going to shield again. I undercharge. It was still enough to knock out. And for the second time in a row, I don't really take advantage of that matchup enough. And here, this is looking kind of rough, dude. I got to go for a Night Slash to try and get a shield or connect. And I get the shield, but dude, this Giratina up energy. This is not looking great for us. This is not looking great for us. I have to really make a call. If I get Ominous Wind Baited and he boosts, I probably lose the game on the spot. But I decide to shield, and I do correctly shield a Shadow Ball. This is nice because it forces him to go for another Shadow Ball and not being able to go straight Ominous Wind at this point. And once again, we're in a similar situation to that Trevenant Sweeper in the back. Can Skarmory withstand this Shadow Ball from the strong Giratina? Yes, it can. And I actually go for the Bray Bird here just to give less farm for that Vigoroth. A little bit less farm for the Vigoroth since we're debuffed. Vigoroth comes in. Vigoroth has a lot of energy, so I was a little worried about Double Rock Slide here. But our opponents seem to think that Double Rock Slide was not enough to knock us out. And they are going to uh, surrender there for... Our second 5-0 in a row. We get Marini the Meanie as our reward. And we will look to collect in on the on the cash, aka the Elo. Some nice stardust too. 2843. Two sets, 143 points gained. As we go on to set number three. Might start to get some Q times here. So we'll see if I have to drag a little bit find the battle sorry that's a little bit annoying <laughs> my bad yakai terrific player yakai um so that was 10 wins in a row so far and we're gonna try and keep the streak going um i would say a slightly positive against skarm well depends how you look at it you might say it's positive for skarm because they would win the zero shield scenario but annihilate probably wins the ones and the twos and we're able to hard sort of punish this Cresselia swap in. Going for a sky attack here. Don't really want to debuff myself unnecessarily. Want to try and come out with some energy as well if possible. Since I have quite a hard punish here in my Skarmory. They're running the Future Sight variant. Which despite being resisted still. Chunking away at our Skarmory. Throwing on charge attack priority here. I'm almost at two charge attacks. Sky attack does knock out. And I'm thinking you know I do not want to give him a huge farm down. With his own Skarm. So I immediately pivot into my Dugong here. Dugong going to go for Icy Winds here. Chip away. Debuff the Skarm. And um, I'm a little bit nervous. Because I'm thinking. Hmm. He must have another Annihilate answer. If he was willing to swap out right away. So I'm going to uh, over farm here. Because I don't know what's in the back. I'm going to respect a potential Brave Bird here. Would probably knock me out. And he does go for it. So a nice little shield call. And it's a Go-Goat in the back. What the heck? A Go-Goat in the back. <laughs> Dugong's going to throw the Icy Wind. Grab the shield. A um, little awkward here. I'm like debating whether I want to shield to get off my Icy. I think either play would have been fine. But what I don't want to happen is open myself up to a scenario where his Skarmory like somehow is able to one-shot my Annihilate in the endgame with a, with a Brave Bird. So I wanted to save my shield at all costs for that Skarmory. Go-Goat usually runs Leaf Blade Brick Break. I don't even know if it has another charge move. It probably does. Let me know in the comments. But we are just going to over farm here. We throw in the charge attack priority. Want to make sure if I'm going to close combat, I have enough energy where I'm not going to get completely farmed down here. And I feel like I should be safe. As you see, we get to another close combat pretty comfortably. And this will knock out the Skarmory, of course, for a GG. Make it 11. Make it 11. Maybe if Editor Chris learned uh, motion graphics, like... Adobe After Effects could have a, a cool counter going for like the win counts. 11. Boom. Wins in a row. And here we go. On to the next one. Can we make it 12? Can we make it 12? 
let me know in the comments what is your longest win streak in the Go Battle League. Maybe excluding if you're someone that like, because some people will I know like tank their elo on purpose to very low elo and then go on big win streaks. But maybe like your your biggest real win streak <laughs> if that if that is uh if that's an allowed a, a usable term in this scenario. Um, Night slash. We're gonna act like we have shadow ball. Our opponent doesn't fall for it, so I'm just gonna go straight for another night slash here. Kind of hoping that they shield, to be honest, and they do. So this is going to be a little bit nice for us, because I should live a discharge from this range and get to my final Night Slash since I'm only one away. So this is kind of perfect, because either it connects and we can like knock him out in one fast move, or he gets, or we get a shield advantage. I go for the one Ice Shard here as a head start. Also, since Dugong's just like a little bit safer, I would say in general than Skarmory. And we are waiting for what comes in. It's his own Skarm. Um, I throw the Icy here. Interesting. I guess I'm hoping, like, if he had a charge a bug lead, whatever's in the back might be weak to Skarm. So I'm hoping maybe it's, like, Gligar in the back. And I can just stay in here. He elects to Bray Bird. Then he's going to dip into a Whisk Cash. A little bit awkward here, to be honest. A little bit awkward, because I don't love the Skarmory Whisk Cash matchup as Skarm. Since Swiss Cash, of course, resists your Steel Wings. But I figure if I can debuff him, I can easily withstand two Scalds. And maybe I can just commit to the double Brave Bird here and put myself in a decent situation. If he debuffs me again, this could be concerning because then Brave Bird might not threaten to really knock out. Scald doesn't debuff me that time, even though it says attack fell. Bit of a text, text error. And we're going to go for the Brave Bird here. Brave Bird puts it super low. And this is only a Mud Bomb, since my counts are on point here. So I know I don't need to shield this. My Steel Wing that went through knocks out, so I'm immediately looking to tap that Brave Bird to either inflict some nice damage or to get the final shield here. Brave Bird grabs the final shield, and we are up a shield here. So he is going to outpace us to a move, but we have a shield to hide behind, so he's committing to fast moves. And we are going to get off this Icy Wind. It's going to put Skarmory super low. One Ice Shard does the trick. And we're able to escape there with a win. Close game. Close game. Kind of neutral all the way around. And we're able to escape with a win. Keeping the win streak alive. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Let me know in the comments how your Go Battle League season is going so far. This season has been... Full of ups and downs for me so far. We were stuck, as I mentioned in a previous video, in the 2400s for like a good week or so. And um, not anywhere close to the leaderboard, really. And then we went on a crazy run one day, or two days, 18 and 6. 18, 6 and 1, 18, 7. So that like sparked us way ahead in back-to-back -back days onto the leaderboard. And then yesterday, dude, I don't even know what happened, man. Well, you're seeing what happened. So I do know what happened. We got a lot of favorable leads, and we're able to make some nice plays as well as we look to continue this win streak. Annihilate into Sand Slash, and amazing lead. Someone just yawned in the comments. Rise, my grandma could have went 23-2, 23-2 with these leads. Well, we did just beat a charge bug, which kind of court breaks our whole team the game before, so cut me a little bit of slack. Cut me a little bit of slack. What name should I use? Um... I feel like I used Jeremiah too much. We used Clarence already this video. Um, maybe like... Maybe like a cool name. Like Gervonta. Gervonta is a very cool name. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. We got both shields from the Lantern. So I pivot into Dugong. He makes a nice catch onto Azumarill. Well played, but... We would drill run the Azumarill anyway, so it's not the end of the world. And this Lantern, dude, is going to be a major problem. The Lantern has energy, and it is still lurking in the back with my Skarmory lurking in the back. So this is looking quite concerning. But we still have a shield to hide behind. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, need to save this shield for that Lantern at all costs. Lantern is, I think, one shy of a Surf. Actually, no, I think it's one past the Surf, if I remember correctly. So it's at seven. It's one shy of Thunderbolt. I'm going to come in here with Skarm. They throw the Ice Beam, which tells me they probably don't have Hydro Pump. I feel like they would have thrown it if they had it. And um, 
Oh, wait, they already play roughed the, uh, <laughs> obviously, okay. We're gonna have to eat this move, but we know we can get off our Brave Bird here, which is gonna be really nice damage. I'm not sure if I can get to a move after the Brave Bird here, since I'm gonna be debuffed, but Brave Bird does big damage, and I'm actually only one off the Sky Attack, so I get to the Sky Attack here. This should knock out, but this is going to give Lantern... Oh, they come in with Azu instead. I have my shield to hide behind, and I'm thinking the Wind Con here... I know he's one shy of Thunderbolt. I'm not yet in surf range. I need to double up on the drill run. That's my win condition. I need to double up on the drill run. I have the double up, and I need to hope that Dugong either wins the charge attack priority or that I live the surf, and he understands surf's not going to knock out, so he goes for the extra move, and that is going to be a GG as drill run does knock out the lantern. Super effective damage there. Well played by the opponent. He had a tough lead, but we didn't really have a response to the Azumarill um, or the Lantern. I think it was an A-slash lead, right? Or was it a... Yeah, it was the A-slash lead. I was wondering... I was forgetting if it was the Lantern in the lead or not, but I think it was the A-slash lead. Holy cow, dude. One of the craziest win streaks we've had in our Go Battle League career. And let's see if I need to skip ahead a little bit. Okay, next opponent here into a Dugong, positive lead. He swaps into his own Annihilate, which we don't really have a great answer for, so I'm going to bait like I have Shadow Ball. I build up to eight counters here. That's very important. This gives us a chance to get that shield, and then I swap into Skarmory. Debating whether I want to respect a Shadow Ball from him or not, and I let it go, so questionable decision. But I am going to reach my Sky Attack as he settles for Night Slash. I am confident my Skarmory can live a Night Slash from this range. So I get off the Sky Attack here. Is my opponent willing to go down two shields? That seems kind of dangerous, especially when he knows I have an Annihilate on my side. So we're able to secure Switch Advantage and keep a Shield Advantage. But a nice play here. He lured out our Skarmory with the Annihilate. And now... Cresselia is completely free against our backline. We also don't have Shadow Ball, so that is concerning for us. We're going to have to come in here with Dugong, and you're going to see me do something interesting here. I take the Grass Knot, and rather than throw on proper timing, I just want to get this off as soon as possible, because I, even though this is bad timing and gives my opponent a free Psycho Cut, it allows me to withstand another Grass Knot more comfortably, which I am happy about. Now, we got to be careful that he catches here after one, so I'm a little bit patient there. We're able to avoid that from happening. Cresselia has some residual energy, so that's the major concern here. I'm debating whether I want to shield or not, but I'm thinking if I let this go, like, I don't want fast moves to take me out in the end. Um, probably should have thrown, like, after one there. I don't know. I guess I was just trying to make sure I maximize my energy while also making sure he's in close combat range. Going for the immediate Night Slash here. Cresselia's getting a little bit low. And we get the shield. I guess he was thinking at 100. Like, I could theoretically have close combat plus Shadow Ball. We get the charge attack party here. And this is going to secure the win. Because now, we still have a shield to hide behind. We can simply let our Annihilate go. And save a shield for our Dugong, who has a charge attack loaded. Theoretically, should have thrown Drill Run here. Since Drill Run does more raw damage. But I was confident in that, in that split second. That Icy Wind was still enough to knock out anyway. And we get... Another win. That was a deep con. Shout out to a deep, terrific guy, terrific battler. And we search for the next opponent. It's the Pato man, half Pato, half man. Quick, so tough lead here into the Sable. I'm gonna have to switch Dugong. Um, side note into Pato man. Pato man, like one of the top players in Europe, top players in the world, really. And he had a really nice tweet. Um, I forget when it was, but. He had a really nice tweet that kind of made my day where he was saying, like, my videos are were, like, one of the major sources he learned how to play this game at a high level. And I really appreciate it. It's kind of like a full circle thing, right? Because I used to watch people like FP Stix, Zionic, of course, um, Caleb Pang, King IV, and uh, that's where I learned a lot of my skills. So coming full circle, now, like, these top players telling me, like, my videos are where they learned some of their skills. It's a pretty cool moment for me. Anyway... Little side tangent there, 34 minutes into the video. <laughs> We're pretty good. We haven't done too many side tangents. Normally, I'm all, all about the side tangents. But uh, Skarm is going to farm down here. We do pick up a shield advantage. There's a, yikes, there's a Registeel in back. And um, this is looking a little bit concerning. 
because Gligar, we don't even have Shadow Ball or Ice Punch, so we don't have a super threatening move for this Gligar. I'm going to go for the Night Slash, not even because I'm baiting, but because it's like my best thing to throw here at this Gligar. And we are slightly ahead on energy, so that is one thing going for us here, where we're going to be able to outpace to the third move. He shields, and I get the boost, and this is huge, because now my next Night Slash will definitely knock out. Before, it might have been close without these boosted counters, but this is obviously going to knock out. I am forced to throw, however, because he would get to that Aerial Ace. So I'm forced to throw, and I'm debating, hmm, do I, like, swap and bank a move? I'm just going to stay in. I'm just going to commit. I'm just going to commit to the close combat. One HP and a dream boosted close combat. Bang, knocks out the Reggie. And uh, didn't have enough energy for Shadow Ball there. So that is a game I believe we won um, because of having close combat as opposed to, to Shadow Ball. And... I think that was the case in a lot of these neutral games more so. We definitely had some favorable leads throughout this video. Not some, a lot, but um, some of these neutral matchups in the lead that came down to kind of winning the lead. Having close combat was really beneficial for us in a lot of those close games and those close situations. We get the Vullaby, and that puts us at 29-13, bro. A 15-game winning streak in a row. Rise, are you selectively showing us these battles? In this case scenario, my man... We are not. Those were 15 battles consecutively. Can we make it 16, or will the streak come to an end here? Annihilate into a Shadow Gligar. We pivot. We're met by a Polyrath. This is looking pretty rough. This is looking pretty rough. The chat was super hyped at this point. We had won 15 games in a row. Can we keep this alive somehow? Drill Run connects. I'm debating here. Hmm. Do I shield simply to, simply to get one shield off of him? I decided not to, but I kind of was like thinking, hmm, maybe that would have been the better play. Come with Annihilate. I know I'm lined up against Gligar anyway, so we're kind of hoping that Skarm, maybe he's somehow ABA weak to Skarm. Maybe Skarm can sweep here. We eat the Skull. That does so much damage. So much damage. And uh, unfortunately, we're met by a Lickitung in the back, which is a slightly favorable matchup for Skarm. However, Lickitung is such a beast, it can very much hold its own in this matchup, especially in the two-shield scenario where these licks add up just as much as the Steel Wings do and you outpace to these body slams, which slowly chip away. So at this point, I realize the game is probably over. We'll play it out. We'll fight till the bitter end here because we got such a crazy win streak going. But I think our opponent's in a very favorable spot here as uh, Lickitung keeps on licking away. <laughs> And um, I'm thinking one thing I could have done differently in this game was maybe shield. I, as I catch a body slam here, trying to pull out all the stops. Trying to pull out all the stops. I need him to shield this. I need him to shield this potential ice punch to give myself a chance. <laughs> Even so, I think we're, uh, we're in a tough spot. But um, at this point, I think, oh, okay, I'm going to shield. I'm, I'm going to play it out. But I think if we had... Shielded our Dugong, baited Icy, hoping to get a shield in return. I think we might have been able to win because I think how it plays out is it's the same situation except one shield is down now and we could have debuffed the Polly to take a little bit less damage on our Annihilate. Maybe I still lose because it's basically Skarmory against... Basically Skarmory against... Um, Licky in the ones, which is still a close matchup. So maybe I'm just being kind of crazy. But anyway, we finally fall. And these next three battles were the set I did off stream. Um, as we get a boost here <laughs> onto our Annihilate here in the mirror match. And we win the Charter Attack Party. Very nice here. Um, oh my god, double boost. What the heck, dude? Double boost. I forgot about this battle. Double boost. We get baited as well with the Night Slash. And at this point, I'm skeptical that he even has um, Shadow Ball. So I decided to shield it, or to no shield it, rather. I think because of the Home Slice Henry influence, less people are running Shadow Ball right now on their Annihilate. And we are going to knock out his Annihilate. He lets it go. We are quadruple boosted, right? Four times attack boosted. So our moves are going to do significantly more damage. Oh my gosh, dude. Look how much that close combat did. And now we've got a two-on-one fast break, as I like to say. And we go for a little bit of style points with the catch onto the Greedent. <laughs> and uh, 
we catch the trailblazer just kind of fun and then he top lefts we were in a favorable spot anyway so it's not like the catch mattered too much but kind of fun um, like we could have probably just swapped and we were still in a great spot but uh yeah that was a i think i have these battles in reverse order here at the end unfortunately oh shoot that's my bad editor chris is bad 29 76 is the ending elo but i've got two more battles here that we will wrap up the video with just a crazy run crazy run. i don't know if i'll ever be able to duplicate this dude to be honest i don't know if i'll ever be able to duplicate a 23 and 2 day in the go battle league just kind of insane um and i do love having close combat in these types of situations where you just can get to this a little bit faster i have the opportunity to double close combat him if he elects to shield he lets it go so i decide to save it and go into my dugong here and i might go for a very bold ice shard down i'm gonna have to take at least three mud bombs here most likely before we could ice shard down but i think i'm willing to do that because i know i'm able to withstand that damage with this bulky dugong he is gonna reach another mud bomb here with cash so spammy as we know and uh we get this big ice shard down. Skarmory comes back. I've got the double icy wind. Chip away at this Skarm. And um, I would think we come in with our own Skarm or not. Actually, I might combo play here. Let's see what I do. Yeah, combo play. He anticipates the combo play. But luckily for us, it's a Shadow Hippowdon. So uh, it doesn't cost us too much because both of our Pokemon here have play against this Hippowdon. We sneak in a counter. At this point, I'm thinking, like, I just go straight fast moves because that Skarmory, if you remember, is so low. We can just commit to fast moves in this situation. And, yes, he does outpace us. We don't get off our energy, but we're totally okay with that because we can steel wing down the Hippo, and then we can steel wing down the opposing Skarmory for the dub. Oh, my goodness. One final battle in the video. The legendary Wanilo hits... Number one on the leaderboard all the time. We lead into Gligar. We swap Dugong. And he swaps Skarm. And right away, we're thinking, okay, bad lead. But this is a matchup we can flip. And this is a matchup we're going to try to flip at all costs to save our alignment and line up our Skarmory against that Gligar. We are going to see a uh, charge attack coming through here. I decide to let the first one go through, anticipating the sky attack. Go for another icy wind here. And will we see a shield come up from Wanilo? We will not. So he's going to be willing to just play out the zero shield scenario here and say, okay, if you're going to take switch, I'm going to get a shield advantage from you. The nice thing here, though, is we probably get to see the third Pokemon, right? He's not going to come in Gligar against the Dugong. So he comes in Ape, and I don't know if he was, like, trying to big brain us by coming in Ape, but he had, or coming in Skarm, but if he had come in Ape against our Dugong, I think he would have been in a much better spot. We get off the debuff move. Unfortunately... Um, I kind of have to come in with my own ape behind energy and behind a shield. And luckily for us, he baits the Night Slash. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. So now I'm thinking he probably doesn't have Shadow Ball because he would just Shadow Ball there if he had it since we're already down a shield. And uh, I get off. No, I don't get off. He gets, he gets off his move first. I'm going to no shield this. And it's another Night Slash. I'm like, let's go. This is great for us. This opposing Annihilate's getting lower and lower. We still have our fully healthy Skarm waiting for that Gligar. We get the final shield. I guess he senses he needs to keep his Annihilate down, um, around for the back Pokemon. And then check this out. He actually did have Shadow Ball. So Wanilo, bro, how greedy could you be? How greedy could you be? <laughs> Obviously, hindsight is twenty twenty, but I feel like if he had just gone for Shadow Ball, like, it's tough for me to shield there since I'm already down a shield, but... I don't know. Wanilo beats me all the time. He's an amazing player. Maybe could have uh, wish he had that one back. So overall, guys, just a crazy day in the Go Battle League. We end up finishing 2976. Only, I think, a handful of people have hit Legend so far. It's like Dilap and maybe three others. I think there's like four Legends so far. So I'll probably go live um, as this video is uploading and um, see unlikely that we're going to be able to do it especially because i'm big on like the law of averages and after a 22 and 3 day dude or 23 and 2 day rather um i feel like the likelihood of us going positive is minimal but we'll see what happens i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did a like would mean a lot to me subscribe to the channel here if you are new comment down below all comments are appreciated and all that said thank you so much for watching i hope to see you in the next one peace